This is Mr. Craig continuing on with the titration explanation. Uh, if you have not viewed the first part of this video, then I highly recommend it, which dealt with discussion of part A and part B of this question. This part of the video will deal with part C. Let's go right to the question. Uh, part C says, a sol the solution prepared in part B is titrated with 0.2 molar sodium hydroxide. Calculate the pH of the solution when 5 milliliters of the base is added. At this point in the question, we do not know if we are at the equivalence point. So what we need to do is we need to do a calculation to see how many moles of the acetic acid or the weak acid we have and the number of moles of the sodium hydroxide we have or the strong base. If those two numbers of moles are identical, we are at the equivalence point. If they are not the same, we are not at the equivalence point. That's a huge concept in titrations. Um, even more of an understanding is making sure that you realize that when you're doing a titration, you must convert your volumes and molarities into moles and compare the two. So what we need to do first of all is find out how many total moles of the acetic acid we have. So we're going to take our volume, 25 milliliters, multiply it times the molarity, which is 0.1714 molarity, to get our total number of moles, which in this case is 0 0.00429 moles of acetic acid. One very nice aspect of this question is that the number of moles of acetic acid will remain the same throughout the whole question. In other words, this will be the amount of acid that we placed in, place in the Erlmeyer flask and then we'll be titrating it with our sodium hydroxide or our strong base. So what we're going to do in this part is we're going to add 5 milliliters from the burette and find out how many total moles of the sodium hydroxide is going to be added to the 0 0.00429 moles of acetic acid. So we know the volume and we know the molarity of the sodium hydroxide. So in this case here we're adding 0 0.001 moles of sodium hydroxide. So right off the bat, we can see that we are not at the equivalence point here. So what we need to do is we need to make our first ice chart. And our ice chart in this case for our titrations, once you are titrating a weak acid with a strong base or a strong acid with a weak base, you want to get your first ice chart to be a mole ice chart. One thing I want you to also notice is that the, uh, the heading here is reversed from part B. Now what we have is our strong base, the hydroxide, on the product side and we have our acetic acid on the product side. Where the acetic acid was on the reactant side and the acetate ion was on the product side in the first part. Let me show you that real quick. The reason why that was is because we had nothing but acetic acid that was dissociating the acetate ion and the hydrogen. Well in this scenario, or this case here, we are adding a strong base, the hydroxide. So the hydroxide ions are influencing the acetic acid. What's going to happen is a hydrogen from the acetic acid is going to attach itself to the hydroxide to form water. And then what we're going to have left is the acetate ion. But what you do not want to do is have hydroxide on the reactant side. Because when you go in, write out your new KB expression, you would have your hydroxide in the denominator, which is not a good scenario. We'll get there in a second. All right, so what we want to do is we want to focus on the total number of moles that we just calculated up above and plug it into our ice chart. So our initial mole amounts for these um, are as listed. So we calculated the 0 0.00429 moles of the acetic acid, 0 0.001 moles of the hydroxide. And what I want you to notice is that we have approximately zero on the acetate ion. There is a value for that from the previous step, but since we're using the 5% rule, go ahead and make that approximately zero. Yes, I know it's going to trouble some of you, but it's all right. Um, coming back over here, whichever two mole amounts, of the two mole amounts, whichever one's the, the least amount, that one will go to zero. We cannot have negative mole amounts. So whichever one's smaller goes to zero. Now, you'll notice here that the hydroxide actually is the smaller of the two amounts, so we're going to get exactly zero hydroxide ions in the solution for a moment in time. But remember, this is an equilibrium problem, so equilibrium will be reestablished, and we'll have some concentration, because if we didn't have a concentration for the hydroxide, 
there's no way that you could calculate a pH or a pOH, which in this case we're going to calculate a pOH for. All right, so now that we know how many moles we have at, after the two have mixed together, the hydroxide and the acetic acid, we need to find out what the concentrations of our acetic acid and our common ion, the acetate ion, happen to be. So again, since we're mixing two liquids together, we need to find out what the total volume of the solution is because that changes our concentration. That's one reason why we never want to use uh, molarities in a titration problem because everything goes bad in that scenario. Find out moles. All right, so the total number of milliliters that was added here, well, we had 25 mils of the acetic acid and it was added to five mils of, or I'm sorry, five mils of sodium hydroxide was added to the 25 mils of acetic acid for total volume in the flask of 30 milliliters. Be sure to convert those milliliters to liters and then solve for the concentrations for each of the two uh, things that remain, which is the acetic acid and the uh, acetate ions. So we have our concentrations as listed here. All right, now you'll notice that we have a KB value here. And again, I mentioned that earlier. The KB value must be given if you have hydroxide, which we do in this scenario. Um, so we want to take the KW, which is equal to KA times KB, rearrange these variables so we get KB all by itself, take the equilibrium constant, which is 1.0 times 10 to negative 14, and divide it by the 1.8 times 10 to negative 5. So here's our KB value for this reaction. All right, so now we have our molarity chart, and you, or I'm sorry, our ice chart. One thing you'll notice, since we're using a 5% rule, I tell my students only worry about the step at equilibrium. It doesn't make sense to go ahead and do a second complete ice chart when these concentrations are not going to change. All right, so once we have our concentrations that we know about for our, uh, at equilibrium, let's rearrange or write a new KB expression, which we have yet to do. And again, it's products over reactants. And that's one reason why we want the hydroxide on top is so that when we solve for the hydroxide, we don't have to do anything fancy to solve for this. All right, solving for the hydroxide. Here's our values that are given here. And now we can solve for the pH after we find the pOH. So in this case here, we have a concentration, or I'm sorry, we have a pH value of 4.23. Now, that should stand to make some sense here that if we add a strong base, we would expect the pH to increase. Before we added any of the strong base, and it was just the acetic acid, we had a pH value of 2.76. So yes, that makes sense. It, the pH should go up or should increase if you add a strong base to the solution. All right, in the next part, I'm going to uh, do a virtual titration demo here. So go and watch the next video clip here, and I may be able to sum all this up in just three parts here. But definitely look at the next video.